buongiorno. Welcome to today's video. I like to make things using patterns and languages I do not fully understand. So today I'm going to choose a pattern from my Italian crochet book. So that way I can attempt to make something in Italian. And the title of this is Amigurumi Uno So Al Un Siete Sineto in pommel di mano. So if I'm interpreting this correctly, it's basically amigurumi, a crocheted sue that fits in the palm of your hand, which adorable, right? So the back basically says like the first is basically saying there's enough to realize a whole bunch of different animals, it's like stuffed animals. It's Animali and Baltiti, I think that's stuffed animals. It's basically, there are 20 different projects that can spark your creativity, which, thank you, yes, I want that. So, we're going to look at what's inside this book for me to choose from. Did that get bent? I guess that got bent. Wait. No, that doesn't have a sticker. So, I mean, the other... I, I didn't buy these books used, or I don't think I did, but the other book came with an LPN sticker on it, which usually designates it as being used. But like, oh yeah, the pictures in this are adorable so far. It seems to have like this pastel, like pinkish theme, which is nice. So, yeah, it looks like the introduction. We can skip the introduction. Probably, usually, it's just the author going like, look at my beautiful stuff that I have for you that you could make, which, yes, it's nice, but it's probably not gonna give me too much information about how to actually make these things. Ugh. You know, I spent a lot of time like rearranging how I was sitting before I turned on the camera, and then I'm rearranging my sitting position as the camera's rolling, and it's like, <laughs> We already spent all this time rearranging, but <laughs> you guys didn't hear, you, you guys didn't come here for someone who's completely put together, right? You came in for a little bit of chaos, maybe, or I, I mean, I am doing this at night with the hope of it being somewhat peaceful, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now we have the material, so el kit de bes per poter lavorare ah ok so lana o cotone a posto schietta so that's a uh, wool or cotton it's not like the knitting book where it's just like we, we want 100% cotton it's like now you can choose either wool or cotton mm. un segneto numero 1.5 I guess un signeto is the hook, <laughs> which is such a weird term, yeah? Un signeto is the hook. And then, oggetti di plastica a giù dino del diamato di I'm guessing that's a tapestry needle. Like, the three or four millimeters, yeah. Or millimeter, okay. Millimetro? No, their plural doesn't necessarily end with S. <laughs> their plural may not end with S. I'm not really seeing where it's ending with S here. That's an English thing, that's an English thing. Okay, the languages are getting confused in my head. <laughs> All right. Yeah, tapestry needle, so I guess Eunice Un signeto is a crochet hook, which also explains why I didn't see that word in the knitting book, because they use knitted needles. They also uh, have, like, they have pictures of the stuff here, so like crochet hooks, tapestry needles, scissors, um, safety eyes, the yarn, the stuffing. So, in both Titura, that's, you know, usate un tipo de importura sintetica. So 
basically stuffing. Yeah. Segna Ponte. Serve par tener tratia del inicio del giro. Oh, I think, I think that's a um, stitch marker. Because it says it serves to, I'm assuming it's like to serve when you change rows. Oh, Gesetti Artistici or Colore da Makeup por les Fumatori. All right, so that's an interesting thing. This is asking for legitimate makeup, <laughs> which means, I mean, if the turtles on the front cover are any indication, I don't know if you can really see it that well, maybe more on the, like the yellow turtle. There's like red markings around the turtle's eyes. I think this artist uses actual makeup to give spots to the animals. And this is something that I have seen other people do, but it's not really practice I participate in so much because makeup's washable. <laughs> and say like, you want your stuffed, like I usually want my stuffed animals to be washable because I make them for little kids and like, little kids are messy messy beans a lot of the times and like suppose they get a bodily fluid on it you don't necessarily want the decorations of the stuffed animal to like disappear because the kid used the stuffed animal as a uh, thumb sucker or as a bathroom <laughs> yeah if I was making this for an adult, that would be a different story. But, which, I do make quite a few of them for adults, but that's not necessarily guaranteed. Um, I often make things and then decide on the person afterwards. <laughs> and then, uh, there's other things. So, it's like, Ago de Cuchito, or Bichichi, Pince Per Terrare lago filo intale pinciete cola dinelica. I don't really understand what most of that means individually, but I can kind of guess, yeah. So they're saying like other things, like depending on other things that I've done here, they're probably mentioning safety eyes, they're probably mentioning scissors. Um, they're probably mentioning like a thread to like, um, or like a sewing needle to get like um, smaller details because like, it looks like they're using a thinner thread than the yarn that they're actually using to put some details on the face. If I'm judging by this picture of a bear head that I see right here, oh, I'm holding it correctly. Which again is not necessarily something that I do. <laughs> I try to, I try to make it all yarn because I I'm not really crazy about using thread. Um, I'm not crazy about using thread just so details on when I'm using yarn because I'm paranoid the thread's going to come out. <laughs> um, but that, that's a me problem. <laughs> that's not necessarily a them problem. That's a me problem. <laughs> but uh. Oh, there's another thing that says, um, Indicazioni Generali. So basically, these are general instructions that you need in order to do these projects. They kind of apply to all of them. <laughs> so let's see. So, Laborate de Seguito le parte uguale como le brachio o le gambe. Perché la tensione che mette nel lavoro varia durante la giornata e posture rio far fi con du pesi diversi por sanguinito lo stesso schema o lo stesso numero di punti. So while I don't understand what each individual word meant, I got the general gist of that. It's basically use the same tension throughout the entire project. <laughs> So every, whether it's an arm or a leg, 
that was the rocky or the gambit um, Yeah, it, that's basically used the same tension throughout the entire project so all the pieces fit together. Tutti i giri cominano con la tecnica amagurumi del anillo magico. Se non risulta al lavoro con questa tecnica, avete tu canile il lavoro il numero del magico. Oh, that one's simple. It's basically all of them start with a magic ring. And I know how to do a magic ring, so I'm good. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, I love this instruction. Lavorate sempre a spirale continua lavorando un maglia basa sopra el primo punto del giro presente. It's basically saying work all these in spiral rounds. So with crochet, there's two different ways that you can build a round. One is spirals and one are just complete circles. So the spiral is basically when you come to the next row, you just continue with the next row. You don't you do not do any special stitch, you just continue the next stitch and it kind of builds up like a spiral as you go around. While the other ones is just the, I, I forget what it's called, but it's basically you work the row and then you connect it with like a, um, with like a slip stitch and then you chain one and then so it's just more like you're stacking rings and even when the pattern tells me to stack rings I work in spiral because it's just so much simpler all the all the numbers work out the other method is good for like when you're working in stripes and you don't want the stripes to like and you want the stripes to be even but honestly, when it comes to that, I usually just suck it up and understand this one point where it's just going to go like, <laughs> which again is probably not the best practice, but it's what I do. <laughs> um, maybe one day I will have more patience for that, but typically I don't. If there's no need for it, like most of the time I just get away with just doing spirals and it's all good. And this is telling me to use spirals, so I'm happy about that. Oh, so i giri sono lavorati in tento antoriorato di solti con diritto del lavoro rivolto verso di voi nel procedimento ogni riga e descritta completamente e tra parentese si può leggere il numero dei punti estati. Ah, okay, so this is talking about when um, there's like multiple, like, a lot of crochet patterns in, in the rounds there, or like even knitting patterns have this too, where it's like um, when you work, like you work something in repetition, you do the same thing multiple times within the round. So what they'll do is they'll have like the thing that you're repeating in parentheses and then outside they'll tell you how many times you're going to repeat that. So that's what this is telling me to do. Oh. Then insert a un signo punte, a punte al inicio e posta tello al contemporante de ogni hero. So I think hero is round. Um, it's basically saying put a stitch marker at the beginning of every round. Typically, I put it at the end, but the end, but when you're working around, the end and the beginning are right next to each other, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, as long as you like know like when I pass a stitch marker I when I pass a stitch marker I go to a new round it's all good quando finite el cure le fare parte quando finite de cure le fare parte del lavoro nascondete la coda de filo che avanza el internal del in Boratora. I don't really understand that instruction. If I had to guess, it would say, it'd be something like about tucking in the ends of the yarn before you stuff it. Or it could be sew the details of the face before you stuff it. 
so you can access it from the inside which is typically what I do I, I typically do that but I don't know if that's what that's saying Ooh, we got italics italics in Italian okay I'll be good I'll be good <laughs> um, le dimensioni di Pendono del tipo di lato utilizzato. Ah, you sort of Okay. <laughs> it's basically saying the dimensions of the animal are going to change depending on what yarn you use, which, uh, which, I mean, I guess isn't quite as obvious as someone who has been working with yarn for a very short amount of time but I've been working with yarn for over 20 years at this point for me it's like Captain Obvious here yeah of course it's going to change <laughs> so it's basically saying if you want something to be really small go ahead and work it with like super small yarn it's like yeah so now we got the schemey and ooh we have our abbreviations lifesaver lifesaver which it's easier to know, aumento, that's increase, dimensione, decrease. It's obviously that's pretty, um, it's pre like, both increase and decrease, like with their, I guess they're called the romance languages, like Italian, Spanish, French. They're all relatively the same, yeah. English is the one that's different in this case, but even then they have cognates. Even then they have a cogmate. Like you can you don't necessarily increase, but you can augment something. And augment something usually means to add to it, yeah. And we don't necessarily have like a word like we do have the word diminutive, which means smaller, <laughs> even though it doesn't necessarily mean decrease. Catanella. I don't know what catanella is. I guess I'll find out. In Simi, that's probably inside. Maglia, that's stitch. Maglia alta. Oh, Maglia alta dopa. Maglia bassa. I hope there's like a description that says what the is. I'm assuming Maglia alta dopa is probably the double crochet, maybe. Or it's the half double crochet. I don't know. We're going to find out. <laughs> so now, now we get to the fun part. Now we get to the patterns. And we have El Bruco. A bruco aveva fame ma era indeciso rosso di sera or mele si separa. This is a caterpillar or an inchworm. Caterpillar, inchworm, some sort of multi legged bug. Super adorable. <laughs> Like super small too. These are all gonna be like super small. I mean, yeah. Well, Dimensioni is 11 centimeters. 11 centimeters is probably that, maybe? Maybe a little more like that? I wanna say more like that, maybe. Because like, I wanna say 18 centimeters. No, 30 centimeters is 12 inches. So yeah, like that, like that. Oh, the Muppets had this song. They sang on the Muppets show twice. Like, once was like by a guest star. It's like, inchworm, inchworm, traveling through the merry-go-rounds. <laughs> nice little song. It's like it's green and purple too, such good color choices. Although it looks like they used makeup in the eye. Lots of different pictures and different angles. This is good. Yeah, already like good, you see? So I don't know if you can see, but they have, so they have it from the side view, which is good. You can see where the inchworm is, but then they show what it looks like from the top and they show what it looks like from the bottom. It's always good when a like, pattern book has multiple different directions and like close-ups of things too, so you can actually 
get more of a sense of what the different parts look like because sometimes the instructions are not clear. And especially considering that this is a book that I'm reading in a language I don't fully understand that I'm not like fluent in. Very helpful. I'm probably gonna be relying on pictures quite a bit. Pictures and math, essentially. But this is already like better than some of the other books that I've relied on in the past. I I'm thinking about the French crochet book, although that hasn't stopped me from making many things from that book since then. <laughs> um, ooh, Les Mille Galos. This is making it happen. Food. Well, you can't eat it, but it's like you just made the inchworm. You might as well make the apple to go with it. Uh, and it looks like they have a difficulty rating and these were both easy i'm assuming if i'm if i'm assuming the filled out heart is the actual rating and there's only one filled out heart of the three that would probably be uh, the easy rating and the first two patterns are super easy i wonder if it gets like relatively more difficult as the book goes on that's something we'll have to pay attention to Hopefully I will come back around to that and not forget all about it. <laughs> it's entirely possible, but we'll see. Then again, I do have a good memory for some stuff. Ooh, e Topolini Cantorini. These are mice. These are mice. Kind of like begging mice, you know? Kind of like, they're just like up looking with their noses. Th there's a dog in this house. <laughs> I have spent a lot of time the past several days just petting the dog, but um, me petting the dog cannot stop her from uh, being attracted to food. Like compared to food, I am nothing. <laughs> but uh, it's like suddenly she hears something and then she goes up like this. She like looks around <laughs> and like it's just or like suddenly she'll like she'll hear a sound and she'll like listen for the sound too and it's it's very interesting to spend, spending a lot of time around the dog yeah we we got a little mouse here pretty short which there's a lot of makeup on this mouse so it's interesting it looks like this pattern designer is using makeup to give little details to things that I would typically do in another color. I would typically get another color yarn for like the ears or like the inside of the ears, but well, the inside of the ears here are pretty small and they can't really, um, they don't really have room, but also like the nose, I would maybe just do like a round with the nose and then switch to another color yarn or maybe sew on the nose, but that's makeup here. Le Uccellino? This is a little baby bird in a nest. So cute! So cute! Okay. It looks like there's some sort of special stitch on the nest. Like on the top to give it this nice little thing. This like so cute with the little three. Oh my gosh. I mean that that will take no time at all. In fact, that might take less time than the 20 minute duck. <laughs> so uh I I came across this YouTube video where someone else tried a 20 minute duck and um she's like this did not take me 20 minutes. So of course me liking to make my life harder. It's like, well, let me try the 20 minute duck and see how long it takes me. And it took me like 40 some minutes, 40 to 50 minutes. It was not a 20 minute duck. And I sense I had more uh, familiarity with crochet than the person who was trying it, but even so. Although that was the start of me like trying a bunch of patterns from that person because that person wrote good patterns. <laughs> Um, yeah, in fact, like that video is actually like, I think I did that over a year ago at this point now. It's still on this channel as of me filming this. 
Ooh, la tortuga. No, that is not how you say it in Italian. That is another language. It's la tar, tar, la tartaruga. There we go. I have to pronounce everything in Italian. There, there are no silent letters in Italian here. Like, there's a lot of sewing in French knots. To be honest, I don't really know how to do a French knot. I've never really trusted French knots because I always feel like they're going to come out. But they do look adorable in these turtles. Yeah. That's a turtle. Ooh. Even though these turtles are cute, they're probably not going to be the one I chose. I choose for this because, like, I do have a video that I released where I made, like, seven different turtles <laughs> in different patterns, so... I am a bit turtled out at the moment, <laughs> but I do love a good turtle. Oh my gosh. Oh, and it starts with the shell, the carapace. Yeah. Looks like there's a little flower on top too. Cute. All right. So we have the Lumachina Stanch. There are two different patterns here. But if I'm going to go by the pictures, I think this is the snail. Look, a cute little snail. There's also mushrooms, but I don't think this is the mushrooms because there's like a little snail right here. Like everything in this book is just super adorable. Oh my gosh. Like it, it is a little bit pointier on top than I think a snail would have, but almost makes it like a character in a Dr. Seuss book, honestly. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever seen a snail in person. I've seen like pictures of snails. I've seen drawings of snails. I'm not sure I've ever seen a snail in person. I have seen a slug in person. Slugs are kind of cute in their own way. They're just oozing along on the concrete steps. Slugs also feel kind of cool too. <laughs> but snails are basically slugs with uh, shells on them, yeah. Yeah, there are more snails here. Oh yeah, and Ifungeti, this is the little mushrooms. Which, honestly, this looks more like a toadstool in this way, but... That looks less like an actual mushroom and more like what a drawing of a mushroom would look like. But I mean, it is a crochet pattern, so it's allowed to be more artistic. It doesn't have to look realistic. In fact, expecting things in this book to look realistic is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> uh, we're still easy difficulty. The difficulty has not changed and everything has been adorably small so far. You know, there is like one person at work who I've noticed every time I have like something small, she starts going like, oh, so small, so tiny. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of adorable. She's also very small and tiny. <laughs> Il Pulsino. If I had to guess, I'd say this is a duck. Quack, quack. <laughs> Um, like, if I were to make this, I probably would not end up making the base, I would not be making the, bir the birthday cat, because if I have, like, a yarn pattern and something requires something, like, if it requires something that doesn't have yarn in it, I'm less likely to make it. <laughs> Just being quite honest with who I am as a person here. <laughs> Um, I'm probably not going to go find birthday cat, but I can see how the birthday cat would add a level of adorableness to it, even though I can't tell if this is fabric or if that is paper. There's also ribbon. I'm a lot less likely to get ribbon. I would probably just use a different color of yarn. That. Oh. Okay, we have, have our first medium difficulty here. 
It's El Camaleonte. If I had to guess, this would be a chameleon. Oh my gosh, so cute. I love reptiles. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I love frogs. But I also, like, whenever you go to see frogs in the zoo, you have to go into the reptile house because even though frogs are amphibians, that's where they keep the amphibians in the reptile house. But it also means that you see all the, like, the lizards and the snakes and the um, other reptiles. And I mean, I'm not just gonna, if I'm going to the reptile house, I'm not necessarily just going to um, make a beeline straight for the frogs. I'm going to find the frogs, but I'm gonna look at all the other, like, animals while I'm in there and the reptiles are cute in their own way <laughs> like the turtles too oh my gosh turtles are adorable even the snapper ones a little bit i i'm personally not going to go pick up a snapper but <laughs> um they are cuter when they're not snappers but turtles are adorable anyway like cute little chameleon just like <laughs> The last time I was in a pet store, the animal I geeked out over the most was the bearded dragon. <laughs> like, the bearded dragon was so cute. Okay. Alright. We have Le Elefantino. Which is interesting because it's like the little elephant. <laughs> um, not just elephant, just the little elephant because it has Tino on the end and that's like a diminutive like Italian term. Tick tock, tick tock. Convencia la parata marciano el picotti elefante secretone. Oh, so this is like a circus elephant, I guess. I mean, I've seen a lot of elephant patterns. This one is simultaneously a little bit more realistic looking and a little bit more adorable. Even if it's really, really small. I mean, they just put a ribbon around his neck too. I mean, that adds a little bit. But they even sew like little the little toenails on the elephant. It looks like they cut out felt and then use the safety eye to pin the felt to the um, head. Which before I got into safety eyes, like I just completely ignored like getting felt. It's like, okay, let's, um, let's just kind of crochet a magic circle and then another magic circle and we'll sew it all together and sew it to the eye but now that i actually use safety eyes and i actually understand how they work it's like okay i can understand why someone would do that but i'm probably not going to use the safety eyes to hold that although that would be cute maybe that would still be something i would crochet maybe the whites of the eyes The instructions look like they're relatively clear and then they're giving multiple shots of the elephant maybe not as many multiple shots of the elephant as um like they did for the inchworm but still some ah la giraffe we have a little giraffe so the interesting thing about whenever you make a giraffe is um how they approach the spots and this one this, this pattern with the makeup route they just they have more spots than the typical like giraffe pattern but they put it all in makeup which means i'm less likely to make it at least for this video because otherwise i'm just gonna have a donkey <laughs> um 
Which sounds terrible, but... It's like... Yeah, it shows more of the spots. The spots do look more realistic than they typically do on a giraffe, but it's also just makeup. Which means this giraffe is not going to be washable. But it's really cute, I'll give it that. It's a really cute giraffe. <laughs> um. Oh, we have a little pig. El Malialino. This is like a little pig. <laughs> so unkoink, unkoink. <laughs> Got the curly tail too, like. You know, pigs are like the category of animals that like, the actual animal itself is not adorable, does not really look cute. It just looks like a pig. But a lot of the stuffed animals for pigs really adorify it and make it look really, really cute. <laughs> also, they get rid of a lot of the brown. They just make it pink. <laughs> Lots of pigs in real life are like have some sort of brown shade to them. I mean, I, I'm not the biggest fan of brown as a color, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, like, that's why my neutral in my wardrobe is more of a blue, <laughs> to be, yeah. Like, if I'm, if I'm wearing, like, a neutral color outfit, I'm most likely wearing all blue. <laughs> uh, La Cibetta. This looks like an owl. This looks, this looks like they attempted to make a Funko Pop owl. <laughs> no, a Funko Pop owl would have like a bigger head. Oh, um, oh, you know what this looks like? Um, this looks like a long lost relative of a Furby. <laughs> long lost relative of a Furby. To be fair, the only Furby I ever had was in Happy Meal, so it never made those noises. <laughs> I just had the general look. And the general look of a Furby is not what makes it scary. I think what makes Furby scary for other people are the little crazy noises that they make. <laughs> There's this truly demented video online. If I find it, I'll link it. Um, this guy <laughs> got like... I want to say like between a hundred like 50 to 100 furbies and he hot wired them all so he could have a furby piano and it sounds completely demented but i respect the absolute insanity that went into it <laughs> and i'm glad that someone made that cursed atrocity <laughs> It's amazing, the Furby piano, oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, the owl is cute. The fact that it kind of looks like a long lost relative of Furby will, prop will not stop me from making it in the future. Whether it's gonna be for this video or not, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh, they kind of like draw, they kind of like draw the, um, uh, feet for it so you kind of get the general idea. I don't know if that's actually a pattern thing or if that's just a design, but I'm assuming it's gonna be a pattern thing. Do they have a back view of, oh, they don't have a back view of the owl. I assume, I assume that's what the feet are gonna look like though, because it, like they have all three toes point out and if you just have that like to balance the owl on it, it would make it a little bit more stable. Okay. <laughs> Got a bit cold. I mean, I am sitting right by the pellet stove, so. But I guess the heat's getting vented out into the pipe, and not necessarily into this room. <laughs> El pescolino. It's a little clownfish. Um. So cute. You know, recently, I want to say, like, within the past month or so, like, um, 
So the largest aquarium in the world, I think, was in Berlin. It was in a hotel lobby. <laughs> and earlier this past month, it just exploded out of nowhere. And fortunately, there were no human casualties. But unfortunately, most of the fish in that aquarium died. And it was, like, so sad. Although when it comes to aquariums, like, I mean... If you, like, honestly, if you just put your fish in a fish bowl without giving it, like, if you just buy, like, one fish, you put it into a fish bowl, and then you don't really provide any surroundings for it, that's essentially abuse. They're just swimming around in, like, a little bowl, and they're getting depressed. They're not getting entertained, pretty much. Like, if you're going to own fish... You want to give them like some hideaway places that they like some things to entertain them yeah <laughs> like you want to actually have a tank with enough room to swim maybe give them some buddies if they if they play nicely with other fish <laughs> um but yeah like my family used to have like fish growing up like uh, we had like when i was really really young like single digits we still we had fish in a tank um we had a catfish, which helped keep, keep the tank clean. Although, when you're a little kid, having nocturnal fish is kind of boring because they're not awake when you are and you don't get to see them swim around. <laughs> we also had some schools of fish, like the little fish that swim around. And we did have some goldfish. Um, we never had a clownfish like this because that is a tropical saltwater fish and we had a freshwater tank. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I have a hard time eating fish because I remember having fish as pets and I remember viewing them as really adorable. <laughs> that won't stop me from eating certain fish, but given other meat, I'd prefer to eat chicken, honestly, or turkey. It looks like the fish is on a stand. And there are things sewn onto the stand. I'm not sure the stand would necessarily be necessary if you're making this fish, honestly. It would depend on what you would give it to. Oh, so we have... Oh, is that... Fishy pattern. Fishy pattern. Is this another page? Wait, 77, 78. No, that is one page. That is one page. One piece of paper. Paper is not singular for paper. <laughs> um, full disclosure, I have been up pretty much since 10 o'clock this morning. It's probably around 10 o'clock this evening now. My mind's starting to go. All right. <laughs> I did take a nap, but I never fully fell asleep during the nap. <laughs> My mind kind of just wandered where it would during said nap time. Um, but it was needed because my mind was still wandering more and I couldn't really interact with the people that were upstairs because my mind was like, Becky, you're, Becky, you need a break. You need a break. You love these people, but you need a break. <laughs> um, it's honestly, I mean, I can deal with a lot of input, but sometimes like if, if it's a lot of socializing, I do like talking with other people, but I also need time to recharge. It's... <laughs> I'm like borderline extrovert, all right? <laughs> I, it's like, um, like it's very easy for me to flip in between introvert and extrovert when I'm taking a personality test. That's like the closest gap, honestly. Anyway, now that we're done with that, a little uh, tangent. Uh, le unicorn. We have a little unicorn here. <laughs> Which is standing up like it's a human. And not like it's a horse. Oh my gosh, would you look at that hair. Um, so the hair is really like... It's definitely a different texture of yarn than the rest of the, of the unicorn. Which if you think about it, unicorns are really dangerous animals, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean... It's a horse, but it's got a spear on the front. It's got like a spear on the front of his head. So if the head butts you, it's like, Phew. and yet we see these as these like 
regal, elegant, calm creatures. And like, no, unicorns could really be murder machines. And like the fact that unicorns are fake, um, uh, made me really surprised when I found out that narwhals were real. <laughs> because narwhals are basically fish with like a spear. Uh, uh, like a spear. Not a spear. A spear on like his head. It's like one super long tooth that just sticks out. And it's like, wait, no, those exist? Really? Narwhals exist? And it was like, but, you, but unicorns don't exist. They're, they're the um, official animal of Scotland but they don't actually exist. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, it's purple. I mean, purple and white, nice color combination, yeah. It's like an ivory, like just really nice animal in general. There's also like these stars on the bottom. I can't tell if, if it's like supposed to be buttons or if it's candy. It looks like candy, maybe. I, I can't tell. <laughs> it kind of just blends in or maybe it's just like paper or it's just plastic or maybe it's sugar I don't know I don't know all right Ooh. so el malalino el orso y el conilio oh so this is basically like Okay, so this is the second pig they have in this book. <laughs> um, there's three different patterns. There's a pig, there's a rabbit, and there's a bear. And they're shaped like teddy bears. They're not, a, like the pig earlier in the book was shaped like an actual pig. This is a pig that's shaped like a teddy bear. So here we go. Pig, rabbit, bear. <laughs> It's cute. I guess they paired them together because like they're I guess they were made like they're intended to be like a set so they put them together like a set. Oh. Oh. They all have the same base. Same base. You just make it in the right color and then you have instructions for the pig, you have instructions for the rabbit, and then you have instructions for the bear. Makes sense. <laughs> and then there are different sewing instructions depending on what you make, which are all right there. <laughs> Smart way to do it. That, the French crochet book did that too, honestly. Ooh, that's Stumia. It's a monkey. We have ourselves a monkey. Which I mean, monkeys I could take him or leave him. <laughs> this, this is kind of cute, but to be fair, I'm gonna like go all a lot more harder when it's a reptile. Oh, the difficulty just increased, huh? Yep, the difficulty just increased. We were in medium difficulty up until now, the monkey is the start of the hard patterns. The monkey has something on the side. Which, oh, yeah, the monkey has a uh, ice cream cone. Or maybe, yeah, ice cream cone. That's not the word for gelati. <laughs> Il coni gelosi? So that's back to easy thing. So I guess the monkey wants ice cream. Which is smart monkey. Ice cream's good. <laughs> La Cocinella? Some sort of bug. I can't tell. I'm guessing it's a bug because I don't see this as a book that has human-like figures in it. But it seems like a... It seems like a little kid in a spandex costume playing superhero, yeah. But I'm assuming it's some sort of bug. Black and red. Probably a ladybug. Yep. <laughs> Those are ladybug spots. 
So this is a ladybug followed by lap. That's a bee. <laughs> so I'm guessing the ladybug and the bee are very similar patterns. They're just different because the bee are yellow and black and the ladybug is red and black. Bees have stripes, ladybugs have dots. Ooh, El Principe Ranocchio. So this is the little frog prince, except it calls it a prince, but there's nothing that makes it royalty. It's just a frog. But it's a frog with a little fish. <laughs> it's a frog that's going fishing. Some bigger frogs probably do eat fish, honestly. I would not be surprised if frogs eat fish. You know, I did a report on like frogs on sixth, sixth grade. I don't really remember much about it. I do remember the bigger frogs can, some of the really big frogs can eat mice. Um, also frogs don't really drink anything. They absorb all the water they need through their skin. So anything that goes to their mouth is solid. Yeah, froggy is kind of cute. With like a little fishy there, so. Oh, now we're at the Ponte and Technique. Oh, Cantonella. Cantonella is a chain. <laughs> it's good to know. So, ooh. Good, I will be able to like find out what these different techniques are, but we're not gonna worry about that at the moment because now I have the important task of um, deciding what I'm gonna make here. I think I know. There are like some things that I can't choose because I have another video idea that I would need that pattern for. I don't necessarily want to double dip. But I think I know what I'm going to go with. I think I'm going to go with El Pescolino. We're going to make the little clownfish. We're going to have ourselves a little Nemo. Because, I mean, to be fair, my channel's called The Knitted Fish, yeah? <laughs> it's about time I actually make a fish here, yeah? <laughs> um, even though I have explained, it's because of another pattern that I make, that I have made over and over again, that I've made the channel after, even though I did not create the pattern myself. But let's make a little fishy. Let's have a little cute little fishy. I may not necessarily make this part, with this part yeah yeah why not even though it is working in spirals and it's stripes and spirals but it's a medium difficulty so I'm not necessarily going easy on myself but uh, I'm not necessarily going as hard as I could on myself either <laughs> and it's not until I said it that I realized how innuendo y that sounded but it is what it is, yeah. But anyway, uh, the next time that I attempt to crochet in Italian, we're going to make the little fishy. That was today's entertainment. Have a nice day. Ciao.